So today I'll be working on a portrait of my youngest son. He was a bit jealous that I did a painting of his brother, and so now he's kind of guilted me into doing this one. Um, it's good because with this one, I can actually take the photo uh, knowing I'm going to be drawing it so I can frame the image better, uh, which I feel is fairly important. It's, it's best to work, if you're trying to draw something out, it's best to work from a, a good image. The image shows him wearing his soccer toque and standing in our backyard. The soccer toque uh, consists of several bands of blue and white, and I've used sea blue and indigo blue for the blue layers. So uh, the first difference I did between the previous one and this one is that I used mustard for the skin tone. I've used fuchsia and red for his lips. I've tried to leave certain areas um, white, and that can be quite difficult with the ink tents because you are applying a wash, and if you apply too much water, that'll spread out. He has very dark brown eyes, so I'm using a willow and bark. Bark for the top half that's a bit shaded, and uh, willow and baked earth for the bottom section of his eyes. I'm darkening up the skin tones with willow and some baked earth. I've used fuchsia for the shirt and uh, charcoal gray for the highlights on his collar. I'm also layering the eyes alternating between uh, willow and bark to try and darken them up. I'm adding the shadow for his toque. Darkening up the skin tones. I'm using a mix of white and iris blue for the pale blue section of his toque. I've applied iris blue and indigo blue lines to the toque to try and give it that grainy look. I've used small amounts of fuchsia for skin tones on his cheek and his nose and his chin. I've also applied a small amount of gray and fuchsia on the inside of the whites of his eyes. As it's a lot of layering, I'll usually work on the face a bit. And after I wash that, I'll move on to the toque and or move on to the eyes. And while one's drying, I just move on to the other area. And, uh, and that way I can keep darkening things up. Once in a while you will see me bring out the white. I'm usually trying to lighten up an area and bring out the contrast and add a little depth to his facial features. And as you can see, I'm procrastinating putting in the eyelashes because I know when I do, I'm going to make a mess of things. So originally I applied a uniform layer of mustard to the entire face. And now with all the layering, you'll see that there's very little of that left. So you'll see I made a mistake there. I added bark just above his eye and it was too dark. So I quickly, quickly blotted it with uh, a paper towel and then I applied a wet paintbrush, just a watered paintbrush to kind of smear that, blend that color around and that, that fixed the mistake. So if you do make a mistake, um, you, you can fix it. You have to be fairly quick because once that ink dries, it's permanent. Again, more details on the face and now I'm starting to put in the background. And uh, it's uh, our fence that we have in our yard, and then there's some trees in the background. Now I'm going, doing the eyelashes, some details on the face, and then I jump back. While the face dries, I work on the background again. The background's quite fun because you can cover a lot of area in a little amount of time. That's the finished product. I'm quite a bit happier with this one. 
Uh, it seems more realistic. It does seem like his face. There's a few minor flaws, but uh, in general, I'm I'm happy with uh, how the pencils performed to to create this. My next drawing will be using the Prismacolor Scholar student grade pencil crayons, and that should be done again probably a w little over a week. <laughs> 